You see that in there? That's the disc that spins. So many moving parts on this thing and a lot that can go wrong. Hi everyone, welcome to pal to tech Today we're taking a look at what I think are the best hard drives for editing for photographers and filmmakers. These are all external drives, and I'm purposely not including NAS or RAID systems. So for today, we will limit our focus to external drives. Every single product that I'll be mentioning in this video, I use daily for both photo and video editing. Now, while I will be demonstrating everything on a Mac, you can definitely apply everything you're gonna learn today to a Windows PC environment as well. There are two types of external drives hard disk drives, HDD, and solid state drives, SSD. Hard disk drives have been around since the 1950s and you'll find them everywhere. They are less expensive and can usually store more data, but they're slower, they're noisier, and they have moving parts in them. They're basically an enclosed unit that has a spinning platter, like a record or a CD, right? And it spins, and there's a head on it that reads and writes the data to this platter. And these type of drives can be very, very fragile, and generally you shouldn't be traveling with them and knocking them around very much. Now, solid state drives have exploded in popularity, and they are more expensive, but they don't contain any moving parts. Everything is written to and read from integrated circuits. There's no spinning platter, nothing moves. So for portability, they're great because you can just toss them in your bag and not have to worry about moving parts. And they are also completely silent and very, very, very fast when compared to regular hard disk drives. My first and number one recommendation is to use an SSD. I'm not even going to discuss editing with external hard disk drives anymore in this video. Okay, so we know we need to get an external SSD, but which ones and what are your options? Well, the first option is to go with one of these ready to go self-contained SSDs. These are by far the most popular option and Samsung for the most part makes some very good external SSDs. By far their best product is the T5. This is a fast, reliable and ultra portable little drive that I would recommend for anyone out there. Here's a speed test with the T5. It works very well and keeps consistent speeds. Now they also made a T7 version that's supposed to be a lot faster. This version sucks. I have two of them and one of them works okay. The other one really doesn't work at all. And the problem with the T7 is that the data is not consistent in terms of speed. Sometimes it'll go to a just crawl and then at other times it'll go real fast. It's not reliable, so it sucks. Don't get the T7. And finally, Samsung makes the X5 drive. This thing is so fast, it's almost unbelievable. Yeah, so check out how fast <laughs> <laughs> the X5 is. I mean, look at the read and write speeds. It's not even funny this thing zips so fast. Of course, you have to have a Thunderbolt cord to get those speeds, but this thing will be fast with pretty much any cord you throw at it. The problem with all of these current portable SSDs that I've just mentioned is that they're often limited to a two terabyte capacity. And for editing 4K video, that is not gonna go very far. During the past year, I've been searching all over the place for a four terabyte solution, a four, terabyte external SSD that can go very fast. And I found two of them. The first is a Samsung SATA four terabyte SSD. And what you do is you get the main unit, right? Which is the SSD itself. And then you have to get a case to put it in. And I went with this Ugreen enclosure here for $17. And then you just plug it right into your computer using the best USB-C cable you can. I prefer a Thunderbolt for this. This is just about as fast as the original Samsung T5, except this will hold four terabytes. So here's the thing, you're pretty much getting the portability and the speed of the Samsung T5, except in four terabytes. Lastly, if you wanna get yourself the fastest possible SSD in the four terabyte size, then you're going to need to get yourself an NVMe M2 SSD. This is basically like buying an SSD circuit that normally comes inside a high-end laptop from say, Apple and then using it as an external drive. The one that I went with was the Inland Platinum 4 terabyte SSD M2-2280. And of course, you're also going to need an enclosure. Now, 
here's where you need to be careful. A number of YouTubers have recently recommend getting the Asus ROG Strix. I think that's how it's pronounced. Anyway, it's weird. It kind of looks cool. It lights up. You know, it's got this nice little key hook thing on it. And it's something that a gamer would walk around using. Nothing wrong with it. It's awesome. But what they don't tell you is that this enclosure will cap the speed of the NVMe M2 SSD to 10 gigabits per second. To go faster than that, you're going to need an enclosure that can handle Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4. The one I went with was the Encasis enclosure. And you simply plop the drive right into the enclosure, just like this. Then just plug it in. Now this can get quite warm, but they do give you thermal pads to insulate it and that does help quite a bit. And here we go, running a speed test. You can see the write speed is about 1600, but look at the read speed, check that out. And this brings me to my last point. You aren't going to see these high speeds unless your computer supports Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4. So make sure you check what your computer is capable of handling before you invest in an NVMe type of drive. Otherwise, you'll be paying for speeds and performance that you won't be able to use. Also keep in mind that the size of the files, the type of cord you're using, the type of computer you have, and, and so forth, all of those things can affect performance of these drives. However, if you need a four terabyte size drive, the options that I gave you are something I think you should at least look into. And no matter what, moving from an HDD to an SSD can be one of the most effective investments you can make if you edit photos or videos regularly. And as always, make sure you have a good redundant backup strategy for any type of hard drive that you use. I'll be back with more on this topic in future videos on data storage. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. And if you did, be sure to give it the like and subscribe. I will see all of you in another video again very soon. Take care.